Carlos Cada is developing a balancing package which incorporates some council member proposals and she will present that in budget committee uh, next week on the 10th. Uh, the next deadline after that will be Thursday the 12th when council members can put forward proposals with a to amend the chair's balancing package with a 5 p.m. deadline. Thank you. And thanks, Noor. Update from the mayor's office. Good morning, everyone. Uh, also in the mayor's office. Uh, just wanted to let everyone know today that we're expecting to put out our release uh, announcing that Mayor Durkin and Councilmember Herbold's proposal to expand the roles for the accountability partners in the bargaining process for police contracts. Um, so that will include uh, OPA and o OIG, and then a member of the CPC serving as a bargaining advisor. So that's uh, an exciting news. All right. Thanks, Austin. Any updates from the OPA? All right. OIG updates. Good morning, Reverend Williams. Good morning, council members. Uh, morning. I'm sorry, commission members. I'm a little bit uh, fatigued from That's election a, night and uh, you know, a little, little preoccupied with that situation right now. Um, just to let you know, our Sentinel event review process building is moving along. Um, really appreciative of the commission members who are helping us out in the collaboration with CPC. So thank you very much for that. Um, we've got some work product that we're hoping to be pushing out um, to support the, the work group's efforts and that I think people will find interesting by way of a timeline of uh, uses of force and what was going on over the summer. So I'm hoping to be able to share some materials with you folks sometime soon. Um, our outreach efforts are, are going pretty well. We've cast a, a fairly broad net with um, just you know trying to have conversations with community organizations and individuals. So um, I'll be happy to update you guys with that at some near future time. Um, otherwise, we are just wrapping up our DNA destruction audit, which should be out in the next couple weeks and the secure firearms audit, which should be coming up pretty soon. So thank you very much for that opportunity. All right, thank you. Uh, any uh, questions or comments for Inspector Judge? All right, thank you. All right, the uh, next item on our agenda is uh, CPC updates. Uh, uh, any updates uh, from the co-chairs? I, 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 we do have an update uh, and we might, uh, it, I, I, um, I don't know if we would need to uh, agenda amend uh, agend, uh, amend our agenda for the update because it. Well, I guess we could just go ahead with the update. I, as you heard, uh, Austin Miller uh, from the mayor's office talking about the uh, press release is going to be I, I released today. Um, we I had an opportunity to uh, be involved uh, with an external uh, advisor for the uh, for for the contract and. Uh, uh, the way that it actually uh, wound up is that uh, the CPC needed to uh, send a recommendation or a name or uh, someone that we thought that uh, could be part of that bargaining, uh, be part of that uh, uh, process uh, that was a commissioner or someone else that had been involved. And uh, we sent over two names, the co-chairs uh, uh, in, in consultation with Brandy. I, I, we sent over uh, two names. Uh, one was Betsy uh, uh, Graf, because she had been previous uh, executive uh, interim director uh, back in 2013 and 14. Uh, and then we sent over uh, Suzette. Uh, she agreed uh, after we took in consultation with her, Suzette Dickerson, because that's uh, she has a lot of experience in this background. And the mayor uh, accepted uh, uh, Suzette Dickerson's uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, so she has agreed to be part of this process. Uh, it will be confidential once it's going. 
I, I and so it will not be any feedback to us. I mean, but will she will have information and also uh, be able to before the uh, all the bargaining begins, uh, she will be able to meet with the co-chairs and all of us and, and go through all of the some of the recommendations and the things that we've been working on for a long time to see, you know, be uh, you know to get to get up to speed on that. But she's um, she's uh, confident uh, uh, and uh, that's part of what she does on on a daily uh, as, as part of as part of what part part but it's part of what her her, her job is uh, in, in another capacity uh, for King County. So uh, anyway, uh, this happened rapidly uh, for us uh, and it uh, and so we had to. Uh, move rapidly on this and and so the mayor will be making that press release today uh and and so so anyway it's when it do you know and in the end if i commissioners want to have a discussion about this process and how it rolled out i think we would have to make time for that uh, right now but uh, anyway uh, it happened very rapidly uh for us and and uh, we had hoped that uh, it would be one person that each the uh, agencies uh, the ig and uh and everyone that agreed on, but I, it, it did not go, it didn't happen that way. Uh, the IG and the uh, OPA directors are there themselves. And uh, since we didn't have a deputy uh, director, then that, that made that difficult for us. And so their best, the other options is what I just put on the table. And so Suzette graciously, and she's here today, she graciously said yes to that. So that's, that's an update. Thank you. And that's the first time for us. I mean, it's uh, it's it's actually a big deal. I mean, for us to have be part of this and that's something that we've been talking about and working for for uh, all of the, uh, you know, ever since 2017, actually 2014. So it is a big deal uh, 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 for that. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Reverend Walden. Hi, this is Colleen. Can I, I ask a question? Sorry, I'm not on. I can't put my name in the chat. I'm on my phone. Um, well, this is huge. Huge, 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 and I'm so thrilled and want to thank everyone who um, was involved in this process. I want to thank Councilmember Herbold and um, uh, just like this is really, really remarkable, and I'm very, very thrilled. Um, I really appreciate Suzette um, stepping up and um, representing. Um, I guess I would like to hear more about the process and why it was so um, why it was so um, abbreviated and and there's more about about what, what happened and um i think that we've had discussions in this commission about like when these sort of things happen like you know calling a special meeting or like whatever and i just probably that maybe that was discussed or was tried um but just would hear more would like to hear more about it okay thanks colleen um reverend walden would you like to speak to that or prati Pachyon? Yes, she's here. I think she's here, yeah. Well, I, we had, we had, uh, okay, let me just figure this out. Let me get the right words here. As this was beginning to be rolled out, it was our understanding that it would be one person that the two, that, that the, uh, all of the, um, the OPA and IG and the CPC would agree on. And then when it came back to us, it, it was another way. And each uh, each of the, uh, like I said earlier, the IG and the, uh, and the OPA uh, director are there themselves. And then when it came back to us, uh, for us to find out what we were gonna do about that. And it was, it was you know, it was, it was uh, we didn't have a lot of time. I mean, so let's just say that piece. We did not have a lot of time because they needed to get this need to get it done and so um and so we were asked to send some names over i i i uh, you know by five o'clock last uh, last week i uh, and i uh, and so in the process of that i'd already reached out to uh, to um suzette and asked her i uh, would she be available for that i did reach out also to betsy graf since i i mean knowing that they didn't probably need someone that was familiar with the information or familiar with the process. Uh, and so as a result of that, each person said yes. And uh, we had a deadline to be able to send names uh, uh, and we were under that. And so the co-chairs uh, along with uh, along with uh, Brandy uh, and the uh, Councilmember Hoberl uh, uh, asked us to uh, 
to you know to send some names over and that's the process and and that's how that rolled out and so uh, we cannot you know uh, it, it it was highly unusual but uh, we were under that had to get that uh, done uh, in a different way um, and um, so that uh, they could get going. I guess I guess the, the outline is that they wanna get going on this a lot quicker than what we thought we had time for, for to come back around for C. Because the, what we had agreed on uh, uh, is that would be one person that each, uh, uh, that the partners would agree on and it did not uh, shake out that way. And then by the time we found out about that, we were under a deadline. Hi everyone, this is Esther. Um, to Colleen's point, it, I don't think that this is highly unusual. This is actually business as usual. Um, and I think that this commission has consistently asked for more transparency from co-chairs and co-chair decisions. Um, and so this is another, yet another example of one of those moments where we're surprised by a decision that was made. And um, I just wanna make sure that we call that out because we really need to do better. And uh, this is Commissioner what? Joseph. Um, I'll I'll echo what Colleen and Esther is saying. Uh, once again, you know, I mean, th this was the issues that we um, were experiencing uh, with the mayor's office as far as like, you know, these artificial uh, timelines, and also we could have, um, you know, staffed a meeting where we would discuss our choice. And so, as far as I'm concerned, this is a decision by the chairs and not by the commission. Thank you. Um. Let, let, uh, let me speak to that because I think uh, Reverend Walden, um, I thought she explained very clearly. We were kind of, we were, we were under the expectation that we had uh, time uh, to do this. Uh, we um, uh, thought that there was going to be one selection that was a collective uh, decision between the OIG, uh, OPA, and uh, the CPC. Um, and we realized that uh, OIG wanted to be at the table as, to represent themselves and the OPA wanted to be at the table to represent themselves. And when we were in con consultation with Council Member Herbo, um, she said, we're waiting on you guys. We're waiting on you to, uh, um, to select somebody uh, to be on uh, this um on, on this uh, on this team, and so uh, we had to make a decision. I think sometimes, as co-chairs, I, I do believe that uh, CPC uh, has to trust the leadership at some time to make uh, a decision. Uh, we were kind of behind, and we had to make a decision right away. Uh, we thought about the you know the expertise that Suzette Dickinson has. Uh, we thought that she would be the best candidate to, to represent us, and uh, she agreed to do it. And that's just from my perspective. Uh, I'll let Aaron speak as well. So I understand that there are times that this body will need to make decisions in this fashion. I think what concerns me is that we heard about it from the mayor's office, and that once a decision like this is made, there needs to be a communication process in which all of this is brought to the CPC. So we're not surprised in an open public meeting, but we have some information. And I think that's the piece that I think we really need to work on. And you know what, we were going to, we were making it this meeting, this is the meeting that we were going to do it because it happened on, you know, the all this just happened within the last 48 hours, taken out, the, taken out Friday. So I, and, uh, and I guess our apology is that uh, in the mayor's update, uh, that was part of that before we got to the co-chairs update and had we had the co-chairs update first, then uh, it would have been part of that. Uh, and so it was a sequence of events the way that it was I, I handled today, but it was not our intention to do that because it was absolutely part of our agenda today to be able to give that update here uh, because uh, you know, because we wanted to do it in the open meeting. I mean, uh, for everybody to know it at one time. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, there. This is Colleen. Go ahead, Colleen. This is Colleen. Yeah. I just, I, I'm just confused. Um, and would really love more transparency. Like I keep hearing, like 
uh, Reverend Waldman said it was last week, oh, like just last week, like five o'clock. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Now we're heard 48 hours. <laughs> it's just those kind of discrepancies make me worry about like, are we really, what are we really hearing? And I'm just confused why there wasn't an email to not like, this is huge for the commission. I hate to like belabor it be, like, and I, I love Suzette. I think she will do a really good job, but it's just, just, it's just really disappointing. I don't, I don't know. Um, it's just, I don't, I, I'm just kind of, uh, don't have the right words to express it because um, I also have questions like, um, why what like we have it sounds like OIG um, and the sec um, and and OPA are going to have their executive directors. I'm curious why Brandy wasn't considered. Like what what was there's just so many questions. I'd love to hear much more detail. Well, each other the the other departments has a uh, have a uh, exec have a deputy to be able to do the other work. We didn't have a deputy. Uh, number one and the other. Also, the other I, I, I agencies there, there absolutely have all of the, uh, you know, I mean, the IG and the uh, OPA director has a lot more, uh, you know, experience in knowing the issues. But why can't, would we like to put this on the ballot? I mean, we want to, well, at this point, would we want to just do a vote uh, uh, and say if, if this is what we want to do? I mean, although it's, you know, it's, uh, okay, at this point, I'm, um, Where's Pachi? Pachi, she was part of this also, uh, part of the negotiation, part of talking about it. I mean, we found out about this. In Re Reverend Walden, Reverend Walden, I, I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted, I just feel a little stressed that you don't, okay. that it sounds like you don't think Brandy was qualified. Colleen, Colleen, no, 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 that's, Colleen, not, but, Colleen, Colleen, that's not what yeah. I'm saying. That's we're out of order. We're out of order. Okay. Let, let Reverend Clarify, Walden, please. please. I didn't say that Brandy wasn't qualified. I said that the other I, I directors had, uh, or they had um, a deputy there to do the work and they had years of being, they were more familiar with the, with, with, with the, with, with the work and, and what we had put on the table and what, they had, what we had been working on for these years. So what I didn't say she wasn't qualified. I said they were just more familiar and we needed somebody that could that uh, actually would be in the office. I mean, because the other ones have more staff and they have a deputy uh, to actually run the day to day. We don't have a deputy for the CPC. And so uh, Suzette uh, was absolutely qualified uh, uh, to absolutely be able to be part of the negotiations or be part of the, ex the um, advisor there for the CPC from what she brings with her work on a daily basis. Betsy Graff was qualified uh, for, for working on the legislation and had been the interim director for the for, uh, for the first two years uh, when it was got when we got uh, set up. That's what I'm trying to say. So maybe my words are not as uh, as finesse as they should be, but that that was what I was trying to say. All right, Al Alina. Yeah, I was just going to say one, Suzette. This is not directed at you. So I hope our comments are not feeling <laughs> feeling personal. <clears throat> and, and I totally understand um, being in situations where you're like, crap, we have to make this decision. And I know that, um, I know if I, I'll just speak for myself, I know that I'm not always um, the best, I think, especially during the times right now, uh, uh, being quick in response to my email. Um, I, I think it, it sounds like the problem is that there was a sense of urgency which is something that we tried to, to dismantle um, in BIPOC communities um, it, with, with this like kind of white supremacist cultural norm of like, of being rushed, right? And, and we all perpetuate that. It, it's on all of us. I do it, everybody does it. Um, and I think the, the issue is that there just was, it, it, what I'm hearing other commissioners state is that there was no attempt to engage the full commission in this decision, even if it was a quick email, like, hey, we have 48 hours to turn this around. This is what we're thinking about doing. Does that work for everybody? Um, those present kind of decide in the next 24 hours or, you know, whatever. Um, and then maybe just kind of pushing back on, on pressure from other stakeholder groups, especially stakeholder groups that are led by um, that predominantly white leadership. Our commission is predominantly BIPOC folks and us really working to 
to dismantle how those norms like show up, like, hey, we need an answer now. And it's like, communities of color don't work that way. Um, I understand some t sometimes things are on deadline, but it seems that the, the issue is really just a lack of engagement with us. Um, and again, Susan, I really appreciate you stepping up. Um, but I, I, it sounds like the problem is that we are not engaged and it sounds like commissioners want to know why, besides the fact that there was this push to need an answer right now. Um, and then maybe Reverend Williams, if we could talk about moving forward, how can we prevent getting caught up in that sense of urgency and saying, hey, you know what, mayor's office, we understand you need a decision. We need time to make that. <laughs> That's how our community works. And um, we're gonna be intentional and, and make that space. Thanks, Alina. Uh, Joseph, and I think Prachi next. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair and Chairs. Um, I, I mean, my, my, my biggest concern about this is, you know, um, I'm not concerned necessarily about my votes as a commissioner, as a solo commissioner. I'm concerned about how community continues to be displaced, right? Um, and those are the communities that we're representing at the table. If these decisions uh, continue, you know, to happen without uh, the, the voice of the actual commission, that further displaced communities that we're serving, communities most impacted, who already feel that they're not represented um, at the Community Police Commission and their interests not represented here. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, I've been an anti-racist organizer uh, for many, many, many years. And I would say that, that, you know, this decision is not a collective decision. Um, and you do not have consent on my one vote because of the communities that I serve, that I'm accountable. You do not have consent from me in, um, in, in selecting Suzette um, as our person at the table. Um, and, and, and I just want that to be on the record. All right, thanks, Joseph. Yeah. Um, Prachi? Yeah, no, I, you know, I am 100% absolutely yeah, hearing the, the concerns of the commission and absolutely know that we could, as you know, co-chairs do better. Um, we were in a specific situation and more than happy to kind of solicit any input um, as, as you just provided Joseph, Aaron, Esther, Colleen, um, Alina about, you know, how to, how to move forward here. You know, we were in, you know, deeply appreciative of the efforts of Councilmember Herbold in order to make sure that we are involved in this process and make sure that you know, commissioners themselves are involved in this process. And you know, I think the thinking was certainly that you know, Suzette with her wealth of experience with respect to labor work um, would be one of those people who, you know, having been welcomed into the commission itself, um, would be someone who would be ideally placed in order to do, do, do this work. Um, the communications, I think, could absolutely have been much better. And that's something that absolutely, you know, I think Erin, you mentioned, Esther, you mentioned, Colleen, you mentioned things that we could, Alina, um, things that we could work on moving forward, absolutely. We just found ourselves in a little bit of a crunch, not created by anyone else. Again, I deeply appreciate the fact that Councilmember Herbold has been inviting us into uh, these, wanting to have us in these conversations. And so I, I'm, all I'm saying is that I am hearing and recognizing all of the, um, all of the input so far and will certainly do better in the future. And, you know, kind of thinking about also, you know, given where, where we are, um, how would we like to proceed moving forward? Of course, we have some other agenda items on the, on the menu. And so maybe what makes the most sense is to, do, um, is to do exactly what I think someone else mentioned is to call a special meeting and have an additional discussion. We'd have to give 24 hours notice on that particular meeting. So, hi everyone, this is Esther. I'd just like to say um, thank you for hearing us, Prachi. That means a lot because I'm, you know, the excuses are frustrating. Um, I would also like to just point out again 
that if this was an isolated incident that was really fueled by a time crunch, then we might be able to be a little bit more forgiving. But the fact that this is consistently an issue where co-chairs are invited to meetings um, and making decisions on behalf of the commission without any um, transparency or consistency in communication with the broader commission is a, is a major issue. Um, and I, I think that, that that is where I'm really challenged with this. And uh, I, I would just say that uh, we, if you look back at our minutes, you're going to find that when there's the co-chair update, look back at how many weeks that we literally have zero co-chair updates. And there have been a couple of times where I've actually called out information that I knew was happening that the co-chairs um, didn't bring forward. And so I just want to be a little bit um, tougher on this because I do need you all to do better. We all need you to do better. The community needs you to do better. And I will just kind of jump on what Alina said um, that, you know, see that this is no nothing against you. I mean, I don't even think we're really challenging the decision. It's just why didn't we know? And so I just want to go on record saying that. And I agree with Joseph that I, there is no way I can support this type of behavior from the co-chairs. All right, thank you, Esther. It's Joseph. I just would like, um, I know that this decision uh, was made without uh, the commission being informed. I would like to motion uh, for the commissioners to actually vote on this, um, regardless of you know, if this decision was made already. I just feel like we have a duty to our communities to actually uh, uh, take a stand and vote on this particular issue. So I motion that we vote. Okay, uh, Joseph has made a motion that we vote on the wait, selection. Wait, 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 parliamentary. It's not on our agenda. We can't just throw it on. So we have to figure that piece out. We'd have to make a motion to add it to our agenda. And we also need to understand if this is an advisory or a functional vote. And I think I'd like some um, assistance from uh, the city attorney's office to determine that. Also, it looks like Brandy has a comment. Go ahead, Brandy. Yes, thank you. You all, I just wanted to add, if there is a way for us to be able to have um, an, another conversation or the special meeting that was suggested for us to be able to work through this and have an opportunity to kind of suss it out. I think again, what was shared was as unfortunate as it is, and I understand everybody's point about uh, the feeling like there was a lack of transparency and not being able to have this information communicated um, with you all. I think we're at a pivotal moment where we can figure out a way to correct it. And so if there are any suggestions or ways that we can do that, if the, even if it's not in this particular moment, um, in the very near future, I think that's what we should do. This is Gary if, with the city attorney's office. If I could add at this point, it, it would be proper and appropriate to make a motion to amend the agenda to add this item and to have a discussion and vote on this appointment at this time. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Okay, is there a motion to amend the agenda? I'll step away from the chair and make a motion to uh, to amend the agenda. Yes, yeah, second. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, amend the agenda. Um, is there uh, any discussion on that? All right, all in favor, uh, say aye. I want to do a roll call. Aye. 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 Are there any, uh, any, oppo any opposed or abstentions? This is Esther. I abstain on the grounds that I didn't receive enough information to make an informed decision. OK. This is Scott. I'm recusing myself from this uh, issue. Okay. This is Aaron. I'll also abstain just because I'm not sure what changing the agenda at this point will get us to. Okay. And I think I'm going to abstain as well since it's my position that everybody is questioning. <laughs> All right. So that's four abstentions. So I'm going to have to go back through to make sure uh, we have enough to 
move forward with this um, with this vote. All right, uh, Prachi. Hi. Emma. Hi. Colleen. Yes. Um, I think Esther abstained. Um, Natasha's not here. Is all from Officer Mullins here? Alina? Yes. Joseph? Yes. Douglas? Yes. Reverend Walden? Yes. Leron? Yes. And myself, yes. So uh, the motion carried to amend the agenda um put this item on on the agenda so we need another um motion to um to entertain this uh, well to move forward on the selection process go ahead since i stood up the motion i'll motion to move forward with this uh vote okay it's been vote on what we need to have that specified we need to uh, the vote is to, um, as uh, you know, whether it's an advisory or an actual vote, uh, the vote is to for the commission to actually make a vote on this issue so that we are including our constituency that we represent here on a commission. That is the vote. Thank you. Okay, let me clear. Let me clarify. So, Joe, you're not saying to to motion to make a vote to select Suzette, but what in exactly are you asking? I, I'll, I mean, I, I'm okay with the advisory votes. Um, I would motion for the advisory votes. I just want to go on the record as the commission actually made a vote. And if folks want to abstain because they don't have enough information, that's great. But I just want to make sure that we go on, you know, on record. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it clear that uh, I'm not quite clear what uh, Joseph is, is asking? Um, because the, the vote, there needs to be a discussion around the selection process. Uh, so we're, we're, we're backing up to make sure that the commission commissioners uh, can speak into this in terms of Suzette being the selection, being selected to be on this committee. Hey, Chair Williams, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the attorney is advising. Um, but if it's an actual vote to uh, choose Suzette, I'm, I'm also okay with that motion. I just wanna be clear on what type of a motion that we can actually make uh, during this time. So this is Gary again, if I could just clarify, I think it's as a matter of, or, <clears throat> excuse me, parliamentary procedure, I think it's appropriate to amend the agenda to allow consideration of this uh, uh, selection of this individual. And it's up to the commission then to uh, decide exactly what uh, what the motion will be, but it would be uh, allowed to make a motion to approve, affirm the selection of this individual to the appointment, right? And vote on that right. as a commission. Right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. So there there's a motion on the floor to approve the selection process uh, of, of selecting uh, Suzette Dickerson. Uh, is there a second on that? I, I second it. It's Emma. I have an issue with the wording of that. You're asking us to approve the process, not the selection. Yeah, yeah, right. I think it should be. I, I, I can't approve the process, but I would vote in support of Suzette. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what I was asking. Yeah, this is, this is Colleen. Let's do that. I have the same comment as Erin, exactly. Okay, thank yeah. you. So uh, is there is there a second on the Aaron? Are you making a second on? It would need to be. We need to have this really clearly reworded. Something to the effect 
a motion to, and so Joseph would need to remove his, we need to say something like a motion to approve the selection of, of Suzette Dickerson to represent the CPC and during the negotiations. And um, I don't know if, if Joseph wants to change his. Or yeah, yeah, th thank you, um, Commissioner. Yeah, I'll, I'll amend the motion. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm trying to navigate this. Uh, the motion is to uh, either affirm the process of choosing, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the candidate, right? That would be the motion, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still second. Yeah. I seconded. Emma. Emma seconded. All right. Uh, is there any discussion? I'm taking up a lot of space today, um, Chair Williams. Um, okay. But um, I just, I, you know, this is really um, uh, for me a call to our uh, commission uh, to really think about the ways that we. Uh, either lift up our communities or, you know, displace our communities with how we navigate and make these decisions. And this is a critical time more than ever, right, uh, to uh, really pay attention and and, um, and be accountable, right? How do we move accountably? And so this is not my, you know, my motion to, uh, because I don't think it's, it's the right decision. Um, I just want to make sure that we don't mirror a process uh, that really is built on white supremacy and how, you know, things continue to roll out. Um, um, you know, either in the city of Seattle or in other spaces uh, that we're all uh, fighting uh, for stronger police accountability systems, right? And I just, I have a lot of hope still for the CPC to be that voice for community. And that is why um, I am putting this motion forward. And also because um, I do love you all and I want you all to also be accountable as the chairs um, in, in really making these decisions and that we're not cutting, you know, making any shortcuts, that's all. Thank you, Joseph. All right. Um, any other discussion? This, this is Colleen, and I just will um, agree with um, Joseph. And I just want to really once again clarify how much I appreciate Suzette and believe in Suzette. This has nothing to do with um, with Suzette as much as it is with process. And I, I, um, I really, I really, I, I feel sad about this. Like, this is such a big deal. I feel like we should have been celebrating this. We've been pushing for this for so long. We should have, you know, had a Zoom party. We should have told the whole, the whole community should be, you know, celebrating um, this huge work. We should have given some of her both an award, you know, like, it's just, it's just so, such a bummer. And, and um, I know we've had these conversations about transparency um, that, and I, I just, I just hope that we can get there. And I, um, uh, I, I just wanted to express that um, um, it, as we figure out this process, it is also a process and a time for us to celebrate this huge win and celebrate um, along with the community. So thanks. All right. Any other discussion? All right. The uh, motion is on the floor to. Uh, except uh, Suzette Dickerson as uh, rep representing us uh, as a commission. Uh, let me go through the list once again. Um, say yay or nay. Uh, Prachi? Yay. Emma? Yay. Uh, I think Scott recused himself, I believe. Um, See, Colleen. I'm gonna abstain. We need to know more ahead about the process. Okay. Aaron. This one's hard because I really support Suzette doing this work. And I think the fact that we have somebody who has this experience is so port important. Um, so I'm going to say yes. All right. Esther. I choose support Suzette and I'm going to abstain. Alina. Alina, are you there? Uh, yeah, yes. Yes, I am here and yes. Joseph. 
I support um, Suzette as well, and I will abstain. Douglas? Yes. Well, let me, uh, there's, there's a discrepancy. Uh, Joseph uh, abstained, but he made the motion. That sounds contradictory to me. Gary, can you advise on Robert's rules of order in that situation? That's actually, sorry, yes, this is Gary. That's actually uh, allowed. You can make a motion and not vote in support of it. Oh, thank you, Gary. Okay. Reverend Walden? Uh, yes. Laron? Yes. And myself. Um, I did mention Su Suzette. Uh, I think she abstained earlier, so I didn't mention her. Uh, um, motion carry uh, for Su Suzette to be our represent us as a technical advisor. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, any uh, any uh, closing comments? All right, there. Well, let's move to the uh, next item on the agenda: uh, governance committee update. Well, it feels like a good segue into this. Um, so we had our final, I believe, final review with the city attorney's office on Friday. Um, and so once we get those back, the edits from that process from back, we should be bringing them to you uh, later in November. I do want to take the opportunity at this time to share with the entire commission and not just those on the governance committee that we have been thinking and discussing a lot of these process issues that have come up over time and have really worked hard to institute items within the bylaws that not only give us opportunities to address, make things clear, but also opportunities to do things after the fact. How do we address you know, disagreements? So there is a lot coming in these bylaws and um, I'm, I'm excited to actually bring them to you. Um, but know that, you know, there'll be a lot of discussion at that point. Um, additionally, uh, the strategic plan RFP proposals are due on Friday. We have heard from uh, several firms that they are, you know, in the process of submitting a proposal. So I'm excited about that. And um, the executive director advertisement for this position is live. You can if you're curious, you can go and take a look at the City of Seattle um, website. It's there and it's in a couple other places that I can give you if you're interested, but we now are live with the ED search. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Aaron. Any uh, questions for Aaron? Um, is the link posted somewhere, like the job opening or are they recruiting? I'm sorry if you said that. Uh, it's both. Uh, the recruiting company is doing their own identification of candidates, but the link is live. I can pull it up and I'll put it in the chat in just a couple minutes. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I think Council Member Herbold is with us. And if you, if you allow me as the uh, uh, chair to, um, to bring her up uh, to speak, and then we'll circle back to the to the updates. Is that okay? Yeah, okay with me. Yes. All right. How you doing, Councilmember Herbal? Morning. I'm doing all right. How y'all doing? doing? Hanging good. in there. Long yes. night. In there this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Good to be with you. Good to see you. Okay, you're up, council member. All right, so I'm here, I believe, to, um, to talk about the budget. 
Um, I, 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 I did come in at uh, a little bit before uh, 9.30 and did hear um, your earlier conversation. I really appreciate your, your working through these difficult issues um, of, of, of process and, and representation um, and am uh, happy that, um, that we can all you know, commit to being better. And if there's something um, that I could have done differently to make this all go a little bit more smoothly, um, I'm always happy to, to take, take, that, take that feedback. I have been um, you know, pushing hard, um, trying to, to get uh, the CPC, uh, the representation that it is, has, has sought for a really, really long time um, in the um, work that the LRPC uh, and the uh, Labor Relations Department does uh, relating to the SPOG and SPMA contracts um, specific to um, police accountability issues. And I'm really uh, hopeful and optimistic uh, about the value that your participation is going to add uh, to this next uh, couple rounds of, of bargaining. Um, and not just the, the value that you will add, but the accountability um, you will um, add, not just to the police accountability system, but to accountability over the decision makers during during the bargaining process. So uh, really thank you for that. Thank you for um, grappling with the tough issues as always. And um, I, you know, again, if there's something that I could ever do to make um, your decision making, your process uh, go more smoothly, uh, just don't don't ever hesitate to reach out. So um, on the budget process, um, I think overall, um, you know, the council members made um, uh, a commitment that during the summer uh, rebalancing package when um, the council um, was uh, struggling with the fact that um, we needed to rebalance the budget because we had $330 million in reduced revenues. Um, and we took that, um, uh, that, that time um, where we, we had to focus on the reduced revenues to, the, to all the departments of the city. Um, to, um, we took that time also to be held accountable um, by communities of folks um, who are asking us to take um, a really uh, careful look at the police department's budget and look at ways to um, reduce funding for the department and uh, shift those dollars towards um, other community-based uh, public safety solutions. And um, when when we made those those additional cuts, if you recall, um, the mayor proposed a twenty million dollar reduction in the police department budget for the, those last four four months of, of the year. Um, and the council added uh, about, about, about another $3 million for a total of $23 million of a $409 million budget. But when we made those, those, um, those reductions, um, we talked about wanting to, because again, those were just reductions for the last four months um, of 2020, we talked about wanting to um, annualize those cuts uh, for the 2021 budget. So we wanted to sort of transfer the concepts um, about how we were, um, you know, what our vision was for, um, you, you know, reducing um, the size of the department um, and reducing some, some key budget areas. And we were gonna take sort of that, that proportional cut that we were doing for the last four months of 2020. And we're gonna um, have that sort of be our starting point for um, for 2021, and so for the most part, that's what our budget um, cuts do. Um, we don't go beyond, you know, proportionally. We don't go beyond the kinds of reductions that we did um, in the 2020 summer rebalancing uh, uh, decision, primarily because we don't have a lot of the um, alternative. Um, crisis response system set up that we that we envision setting up. So uh, during the summer 2020 uh, budget revision, um, we through a series of provisos reduced the uh, 
expressed our intent to reduce the size of the force by um, 100 officers through layoffs. Well, I should say rather 70 officers through layoffs and 30 through greater than anticipated attritions. Because of uh, the attritions that have happened in the police department, um, you know, we were pretty much spot on in our in our estimation that um, that we would have uh, a greater number than anticipated at the beginning of 2020 uh, for separations. Um, and so uh, because of because of those attritions, um, the, the the budget, it's the budget proposals that the council is considering right now um, only moves of, of the 70 officers that we were considering lay, laying off. We are now only considering um, laying off about, oh, I'm looking for the number here. It's, it's about 30 officers. Um, and we are also um, provisoing um, funds that associated with vacancy savings. So uh, for instance, council member, council president uh, Gonzalez has a proviso of 6.1 million for vacancy savings associated with 43 positions um, that SPD will be unable to fill in 2021. So what that, what that means is SPD has these, um, these uh, staffing projections based on um, the numbers of positions that they have to fill um, and the numbers of people that they basically need to um, to seek to hire to fill those positions, and how how many interviews they have to do, and how many people have to go through through uh, training, and and they they come up with a number like sort of their best case scenario, the most uh, uh, positions that they could possibly fill. Um, so it's it we don't we're not we're not just we're not budgeting to. Um, we're trying to budget to reality. We're trying to make sure that the number of positions that SPD has are, are not more than the number of positions that they will be able to fill. So um, uh, that action uh, combined with some other budget actions, we are, we're taking those dollars, those savings, and we are committing them to um, the Black Brilliance Project, the Participatory Budgeting Project. Uh, project. So, um, the, uh, the staffing reduction that I just described from Council President Gonzalez, uh, again, that's 43 positions that um, SPD, that they were projecting um, that they can't fill, even though those are, those are vacant positions in their budget. Um, there's $6.1 million in vacancy savings there. Um, there, are there are savings associated with a reduction in overtime um, we are, we're, we're basically uh, reducing SPD's overtime budget by the same number of dollars that uh, Mayor Durkin proposed to reduce the overtime budget during the summer budget process. Um, we're making a reduction in the travel and training budget. Um, uh, again, this is a pretty, pretty small cut um, and it is scaled to uh, reduction in travel and training associated with fewer staff and um, COVID, COVID restrictions. And then there's a reduction in discretionary purchases. And then from the, um, from the, uh, the uh, additional layoffs, there's about another $2 million in savings. So all told, we're looking at about um, 12, $13 million that we're seeking to earmark for the participatory budgeting process. Um, and actions and um, budget initiatives to um, have community-based solutions to public safety uh, challenges. Um, in addition, um, there are uh, there's this effort to create this new um, public safety department, and so um, I have a series of actions that create the what's called the new community safety and communication center. So that's where 911 will be housed. Um, and we're proposing to also house the parking enforcement officers there um, and the community service officers. Um, the parking enforcement officers in particular um, are really, really interested in um, acting as um, civilianized uh, public servants who take on 
um, uh, areas that uh, have traditionally been um, fulfilled by uniformed law enforcement. Um, they've expressed interest in doing things like uh, managing traffic um, at lighted intersections, red light camera and school zone enforcement, um, response to non-injury collisions and response to and reporting on minor thefts and car break-ins and traffic control. Um, some of these changes would require bargaining, but um, the council budget actions kind of help move, move those conversations forward. Um, we also have a number of different statements of legislative intent, including uh, monthly reporting from the police department on overtime use, um, on, on, their, on their staffing, um, both as it relates to their efforts to, um, to hire, to fill vacant positions, um, and demographic information um, on, on not just the new hires, but also the separations. Um, we're also looking for demographic data for traffic stops, um, which council requested back in 2017 in, uh, you may remember the bias uh, free policing ordinance. Um, I think council members, um, uh, Harrell at the time and um, Gonzalez were the prime sponsors. Um, the, this, this demographic data for traffic stops has not been collected uh, by the police department. So um, this would um, again restate, restate that request from, from that ordinance. And then um, there are a number of other reports that we requested during the summer that we haven't received yet and that we may need to put another um, request in with a statement of legislative intent um, on issues ranging from excess pay reporting, uh, reporting on potential civilianization of sworn functions, reports of on impacts of policing uh, uh, from resulting from reductions um, and reports on methods from uh, for providing ad additional incentives for early retirement, including healthcare incentives or other strategies. Um, and then, um, you know, again, I think the the big picture takeaway is that um, we aren't making any uh, big moves uh, with the police department budget. At this point, we're, for the most part, just carrying over the decisions that we made um, in last year's uh, budget rebalancing, but we're annualizing those decisions for 2021. Um, and um, we're doing that because we recognize that um, if we wanna create a, another crisis response system um, that takes 911 calls um, that are traditionally responded to by by the police department. We have to we have to build that system, and with the exception of um, Health One, that the fire department um, has, and some of the the crisis response workers, um, of which I think there are about five um, that work with the with the police department, um, we don't have that infrastructure in place yet. So I'll, I'll pause there and take take questions if folks have them. All right, thank you, Council Member Herbal. Are there any uh, questions or comments in response to uh, Council Member Herbal's presentation? Hi, this is Esther. I have a question, um, Council Member Herbal. First of all, thank you for being here. Uh, second, thank you for fighting so hard to uh, help us gain um, representation in key forums. So I appreciate that. Uh, I would like to know what, for the 911 response, like that transition to more community-based response, what types of models are you looking at? Um, you know, do you have anything that you've honed in on? I'm thinking about like the Eugene, Oregon model, for example, um, because I'd just like to get a gauge about how um, we're thinking about that change. Yeah, so um, a lot of people talk about cahoots. Um, there's another model in Denver called the STAR program. Um, and, and those are, those are definitely mo um, models that are um, focused on taking calls from 911. And so th those are, um, that is one of the models that we're looking at, but um, we, ha we got a great presentation from central staff uh, a couple weeks ago about how to, how to think about um, planning for public safety 
uh, interventions. And there's a model that many of you might be familiar with called the intercept model. And, um, you know, 911 response is like at what's called intercept one. That's when, when you've already involved the police department, somebody has already called the police and, you, and the response is going to be either police or an alternative. Um, we also have a lot of interest in um, investing more in what's called the intercept zero uh, area, which is before police are even called. So that would be, um, you know, things that like the lead program or just cares, um, the model that's been working um, in the in the CID um, to reduce um, uh, reduce the proliferation of of uh, outdoor encampments and the activity that sometimes goes goes with it. Um, and those are, you know, what's what's great about uh, interventions that are in intercept zero is they are activated by community members directly interacting um, with the program. It doesn't require a call to the police department. And so when we think about um, doing these interventions, what we need to do is we we have to look at where the re where we're spending public resources across the intercept model. You know how many dollars are we spending in intercept zero? How many in intercept um, one? How many in intercept two? And and what would what what percentage of resources would we like to see um, our investments reflect? And where are the gaps? And where should you know where should we be putting more money? And where should we be putting less? And so that's that's sort of the 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 planning approach that we've been talking about. And um, again, funds from the 2020 rebudgeting discussion included um, $10 million to HSD to work with community in developing an RFP for these for these public safety interventions. And um, so HSD has has agreed to begin that process. They're going to be um, they're not going to just again, they're not going to just write the RFP and say bid on this stuff. It's, it's going to be a uh, 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 a um, uh, an RFP that is developed with stakeholders, um, and I think the model, the, what I ref, I don't know if this is the best way to refer to it since this is a, a program that has gone by the wayside, um, or at least approach for it has. But the um, uh, Seattle uh, Youth Violence Initiative, you remember how um, it was a collaborative approach, and so rather than uh, organizations competing for one another um, for the funding. They all kind of decided, um, all the different organizations decided where um, what where their their core competencies lie, and and they sort of created a um, a consortium of of services based on the, the both the, the core competencies and the in the specific communities that they served, and they applied together as a as a as a group of organizations for the funding rather than competing. So I, I think of it as being sort of that sort of sort of model. But again, funding different interventions across the intercept model, not real, realizing that you know we have to we have to, you know, some people are still going to need to call nine one one, and some people we you know some some uh, things we can do to um, help intervene on public safety things that can avoid a, a 911 call. Correct, thank you, I appreciate that. One of the things I've heard pretty consistently from community is that there's a concern that we're just going to make the significant investment in the current existing county and city systems and not necessarily expand the capacity of community-based organizations who have experience with more culturally attuned approaches. Um, and I think that that was one of the things that I saw with CAHOOTS and STARS that they hired in um, to create a separate system. So I just wanna make sure that I bring that forward because again, my responsibility here is to bring community voice forward. And that is from community health networks, behavioral health networks, and then community-based organizations. So thank you. Thank you, Esther. All right, um, Aaron has a question. Good morning, uh, council member. Thank you for joining us. Um, I have been watching this conversation, obviously, as everyone else, very closely. And I'm very excited about some of the alternative motions and the diversion and you know, dealing with things before they become an issue. 
but I represent several different communities here, but I'm going to talk for the one that I live in, which is the South End. And the violence down here right now where it is untenable and uh, gun violence specifically, but we are looking as a city at a 58% increase in homicides. And I would really love to understand, you know, how we're going to address that level of violence. Yeah, I mean, again, my, uh, my vision for, um, you know, how we think about public safety in our city um, isn't, uh, it's, it's not in lack of recognition of the public safety challenges that we have. It's out of a desire to make sure that law enforcement can focus on its core mission. And that's why, you know, when I talk about our efforts, I, I so often quote uh, folks from law enforcement. You know, I, I, I don't have it in my notes in front of me now, but I have a, I have a quote from the Southwest uh, Captain Kevin Grossman. I have, a, I have a quote that I use from um, a former Dallas police chief. You know, and those quotes are really focused on how we have asked the police department to do too much. Um, and because we've asked them to do too much, they can't focus on the work um, that we really expect them to do. Um, and we need to, you know, really, again, uh, look at what we're asking them to do, whether or not they're the best uh, folks to to respond to, uh, you know, issues related to homelessness, um, issues related to, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, the the presence uh, of, of of police in in schools or, um, you know, which as we know the school district has decided that they they don't want to continue, um, issues related to mental illness or substance abuse. Um, and, you know, again, if, if we, if we can strip that work away from police officers, that means that the time that police officers will have, will have, will be able to be focused on serious crimes. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I want to, uh, lift up some of the work that, um, the council did in the 2020 rebalancing, uh, budget, we, um, you know, we listen to community um, around um, their concerns around uh, gun violence and, and the increase in gun violence. And we uh, earmarked $4 million for violence prevention programs like community passageways. Um, and I'm pleased that um, in the last week or so, um, the human services department has gotten those, those dollars out the door. Um, so our, you know, again, uh, our community partners can can do um, more of that violence disruption work that they're so good at doing. Um, they they can um, work on you know reducing the likelihood of um, retaliation shootings that have that so often uh, follow the, some of the activities that that uh, have be you know have become far too far too common. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I uh, thank you for being here, Council Member. I, I Herbal and uh, for your work and and all the work that you do. Uh, my question uh, is about the, some of the tools because for years we've been talking about the spot shotter uh, to be able to back, actually bring down crime, to be able to know where the shots are coming from. And uh, and I agree with uh, with uh, with Aaron. I uh, because uh, we have a whole uh, we have many mothers who are crying. Uh, there's been no movement on those cases. I mean, uh, Tyrone Love is all these other cases out there, and I uh, and so I, I you know we I, you know I, what we're concerned about uh, is also how are we going to bring down bring down the violence. Uh, number one, I mean, because youth the youth violence initiative started under uh, uh, under uh, under um, uh, Nichols. That's uh, when it started. It's been a long time. It's been lots and lots of money. I mean, I mean, it's almost like it's been for the homeless uh, uh, situation. I mean, the, the money that has been there. We put lots and lots of money since Greg Nichols into the Youth Violence Initiative uh, and all of those things, and they've done some good work. But somehow, somehow, there's still something missing. 
And I know that law enforcement has been, uh, and we've been, mothers have spoken out many times for the spot shotters and also cameras in high profile areas with a sunset date because people shoot people in the daytime because they're not going to jail. I mean, really and truly, I mean, I'm, why? I mean, because they know, number one, that they're not going to be arrested. And so these are tools that we have been, I, I, we have loudly called for uh, at, uh, at every time. And with the cameras, we asked for if you had the cameras that have a, a sunset date. Violence goes down. I would, you can make some major arrests like they did in the, uh, in the early 90s. I mean, the mid 90s. I mean, when, when you had uh, a, a lot of uh, people being arrested and uh, the violence did go down. Uh, and uh, of course, in those days, we didn't have a lot of those programs that, that we're talking about today. So, I mean, it's still a big problem out there. And I, I just want to make sure that uh, what that we're looking at all areas out there, uh, that's what's happening uh, in, in the community. And uh, don't forget about all of the mothers uh, uh, who, uh, who, uh, who children uh, and, and, and family members have been uh, murdered on, uh, in Seattle, in South Seattle and in the central area. Thank you, Ben Weldon. Um, Douglas has a question. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Councilmember Herbold, for being here. Um, hey, uh, I, yeah, so just a, a quick comment and then a question. So one, um, I'm just glad to hear that these <clears throat> alternative responses to crisis situations are like strongly being considered and potentially moving forward. Um, it's something I definitely support. Um, and I think could hopefully lead to a reduction in situations that could involve use of force um, and thereby, you know, protect uh, black and brown lives. Um, <clears throat> and then my question is, you know, so if we create something like a cahoots model or whatever we're gonna end up calling it here, um, that's really kind of moving in to take the place of police response, what we're really doing is, um, coming up with a different type of intervention, um, you know, where these big systemic problems are, are trickling down, like they'll no longer hopefully be addressed by the criminal justice system, but, you know, they'll be addressed by these alternative kind of more public health um, oriented programs. And I guess I'm just curious what your thinking is at this stage in the process um, in terms of how we, what we can do, what's being considered at city council to um, actually, you know, move more upstream and and and, you know, make investments in uh, systems and resources that can lead to less of the situations that actually end up in a crisis in a first in the first place. Right. Yeah. And that's that's what I was uh, the that's what I was trying to describe when I was uh, describing the intercept model. So, like, what could what can we do to make sure that those calls in 911 don't even happen, right? <laughs> to be to be diverted to a stars or um, or a cahoots program, and so that's why um, you know I really want to take a look at um, a lot of the investments that we have in what's called Intercept Zero, which are you know the diversionary programs, the the types of public safety interventions that. Uh, that can get help to a community or to an individual without a, a call even having to go to 911. But I think you're also talking about um, sort of non-public safety um, in, uh, investments, right? Um, and so I think really that goes a lot into um, the hope that the council is putting into the, um, the participatory budgeting process, the Black Brilliance pro uh, Project, um, I, 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 there are, there are, I, I don't know if folks have had a chance to see them, but there are flyers um, all over the city. <laughs> there are a hundred, hundred people out there that are um, doing, uh, the, the researchers that are uh, uh, doing interviews with folks. And we're going to have this citywide uh, process of um, uh, researchers going and talking to people about what, uh, what, what barriers exist to, um, to, you know, people being able to uh, fully realize themselves um, and talk about a lot of those upstream investments. And then there's going to be a citywide vote where, um, you know, thousands of people are going to have the opportunity to weigh in um, about where we should be putting our dollars, not just for public safety interventions, 
but interventions um, that keep people housed, interventions that keep uh, young people in school, you know, um, safer parks, you know, all, so uh, it's, it's not really, it's not just, this process is not just tied um, only to public safety interventions. All right, thank you, Council Member Hurtable. Any other uh, questions or comments from Council Member? All right, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you guys. Thanks for everything that you're doing in these really, really challenging, challenging times. It's um, as important as it ever was. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to go back to uh, our updates, uh, community engagement update from Joseph. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Williams. Um, so we obviously didn't meet last night. <laughs> uh, so community engagement um, it took a break last night. Um, but we are uh, moving forward with um, some pieces of work. Um, I don't know if folks remember uh, that Roxana had developed uh, with our COVID-19 community engagement plan. Uh, we're hoping to uh, move forward with some of those items, which in, would include uh, Zoom interviews with commissioners and setting up meetings uh, with our community partners. And so um, more to come. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joseph. Reverend Williams. Joseph, yeah. it's okay. I can add something too in terms of like youth engagement. Get it, Alina. <clears throat> um, so we for, for the youth engagement meetings coming to speak with the CPC, um, I've talked to some community organizations and, and we're really uh, what I would like the CPC, what community would like the CPC <clears throat> to think about is um, the process in which we are engaged in what we want that outcome to be. Um, I've definitely heard from community organizations that work directly with youth that Zoom is not the best way to engage them. So. How do we engage young people in a way that is safe and taking COVID into consideration, um, but doing that in a way that is accessible, especially for a lot of these young people that don't have access to Wi-Fi. Um, so talking to folks at Wallblock, RBAC, Creative Justice, Choose 180, YWE, Young Women Empowered, um, and then maybe trying to engage some folks within the MOPOP residency program, a lot of those are mostly BIPOC students. A lot of those folks are houseless um, and really wanting to, to engage them in a different way. So I have a meeting on Friday with some of those uh, stakeholders that work with those young people. And that's gonna kind of be the plan moving forward for how um, we engage uh, with those young folks. The feedback I've gotten from those partners is I guess what they want from CPC. Um, and Nick's gonna be on that meeting on Friday, but uh, what we want the outcome to be, um, what power these young people will have um, in being able to um, actually affect change. So it's not something that CPC is checking off as like we engaged youth. Um, community engagement and outreach are different. Community engagement is about building relationships. So what is our plan moving forward as a CPC to not just outreach these young people, but actually um, build power with them and really uplift their voice. So that's just something to think about all of us as a commission, like when we have young people um, engaging in, in meetings with us, um, how can we like uplift their voice and, and their power? And they might ask for things that might make us as adults uncomfortable, but what is our commitment to those young people and the things that they're asking for? So that's just a little, little update, but also I guess a little homework for the commission to think about when we have these young people in the room. Um, how are you making sure that 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 there's that there's a balance of power or a shift, honestly, of power to those young people? All right, thank you, Alina. Very good information. Um, the next item on our agenda is a work group update from Esther Defon. Um, hi, everyone. I don't necessarily have an update, but I have a follow up um, on my request to the co chairs to have our attorneys do an analysis of um, I see Prachi raising her hand. Yes, I'm going to stop talking. And I hope the answer is yes and quickly. Go ahead, Prachi. Yeah, no, we had um, a follow up kind of we followed up with the um, city attorney's office 
And what we have right now is a meeting that's been set up for Friday in which we'll be able to hash out some of the questions that you had had from that previous meeting. So we'll hope to uh, be able to have some of those answers and for this conversation, uh, we may not wait until the next meeting. We'll just kind of filter it through other communications so that everyone is on the same page before the next meeting. I'm sorry, just to make sure that we're on the same page. So this, what I requested was to have, to utilize our, our resources, our attorneys, to be able to provide some perspective on the consent decree, right? To give that, to make sure that everybody has a clear understanding of the consent decree and where our parameters are related to budget recommendations. Um, I made this commitment to decrim um, because, I, you know, it's difficult for them to be able to do this analysis on their own. Not that they're incapable, but just that, you know, the resources are limited. So I want to make sure that we utilize our resources to get that out to community as well. So is that is that what you're you're talking about? Yes. So that conversation is going to be both about the things that those exact elements that you've identified as those so that we can provide that information to the community and right. then other conversations that we um, that we're kind of thinking about is what what does general representation for the CPC look like. So that's the first layer. And then there's the um, overarching layer of what that representation looks like. And hopefully we'll be able to report back after this. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So that's that's all I have, Reverend Williams. All right, thank you, Esther. Uh, next item is legislative, legislative agenda and police accountability, Colleen and Laron. Uh, good morning, this is Laron Baker. Um, our legislative uh, uh, work group met on Friday. Uh, we don't have a significant uh, update right now. We are still working on our collaborations with uh, community groups that are doing police accountability legislative advocacy and trying to determine what those relationships will look like. Uh, doing research on duty to intervene laws uh, and what um, we may end up uh, moving forward with in that area. Uh, so right now we're, we're doing research and still coming up with our plan of action. Um, so that's it, thanks. All right, all right, thank you. Um, I think one of the things we need to loop back on is um, our meeting times have uh, a change. We're gonna be meeting every other Wednesday uh, we chose to meet this this Wednesday, but I, from my understanding, I think we're not meeting next Wednesday. Is that correct? Okay. Correct. We voted to go back to the uh, first and third me uh, uh, meetings times that we had in the past. So we won't meet again until the, the third Wednesday. Third Wednesday. Okay. And All right. This oh. down the line, but I think that based on the schedule, the way that some of the, the last meeting in the year will work out, I believe, is December 30th. And so if we don't have to decide this right now, but we can have a discussion in the future about whether that's a meeting that we that we want to have or whether or not we want to move to um, a different schedule starting January. Okay. Thanks, Prachi. Thanks, Prachi. Reverend Williams, uh, Aaron, Commissioner Goodman brought up last time uh, to discuss holiday meeting times. Okay. That's correct, that we would look at that this week. Um, we are fine in November. Fine in December too, look like. Fine in December. Well, the 30th is a question if people are gonna be in town, but um it doesn't actually fall on a holiday day so that's a question that i guess um we can bring up during this meeting or or push to another is whether i know my office is closed during that time so i'm on vacation that week but this isn't about me so i don't know what other people's schedules are if we understand now that we might not have a quorum for that meeting it would make sense to either cancel it or reschedule it what day are you talking about, Aaron? I need to get a calendar in front of me. December 30th. I, December 30th? Yeah. If we meet the first and third uh, Tuesday, I mean, Wednesday of every month, December 30th would. Uh, oh, you are correct. We would I mean, not. I was looking at it. To, we're, we're going back to our regular schedule that we've always had. 
I, I to go back to the first and meet twice a month, the first and third. So that just to make a point though, that that will put us with three weeks between a meeting, not that that just so that people are aware because there are um, five Wednesdays in December. Right. Not that that's an issue, just making people aware. We need a vacation. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, then I think we're good for through this we're year. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you for catching that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any any other questions or comments regarding that? All right. Uh, next item is uh, last uh, uh, set the agenda overview discussion recommendations for agenda. Any uh, any questions or comments or recommendations? Yes, I don't I don't have it yet, but um, I'm hopeful that we will be able to do the initial bylaws introduction on the 18th. Uh, our next governance committee is the 13th, and so I am optimistic that we are at the point where we can bring this. So would like to potentially ask for time, and I can clarify that as a later strategy meeting if it looks like that won't be possible. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other recommendations or space we need to set up for the next next agenda? All right. Uh, if Brenda, you have a comment? Yeah, I do. I'm um, sorry, you all. I wanted to see uh, where this would need to land. Um, there was a suggestion made earlier about being able to uh, prep uh, Ms. Dickerson before the negotiation process starts. I know it's a confidential. Brandy, I think you just muted yourself. Okay. No, someone else did. Oh. <laughs> <Zoom> did. <laughs> um, no, sorry, you all, I apologize. Um, just wanted to know if you all wanted to, um, it was put out on the table about having some sort of a special meeting to discuss what the CPC's priorities are regarding negotiations. Um, how would you all as commissioners like to proceed with that? Like, is that something um, that you wanna do in a regular CPC meeting? I guess I wanna just put that back on the table so we don't we don't end up glossing over it, that's all. Can we ask Gary about that? I mean, cause I, if it's gonna put what side on the table, most of the time it's not, uh as public so i don't know i don't know the parameters on that so we probably wanted to ask gary okay same okay mm -hmm. is gary with us uh, sorry were you asking me to opine now i think it, it may be appropriate to discuss the parameters of uh of what is allowed as a confidential discussion uh offline with the the co-chairs okay well mm -hmm. then that takes it back all right then then we'll make sure that whatever gary discuss with us, we'll make sure it gets out, I mean, in an appropriate way to the commissioners. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other, any other comments or recommendations? All right, well, thank you everyone. This concludes our meeting. Uh, have a great day. I wanna say thank you to Suzette for saying yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Suzette. You, thank, uh, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.